Hey guys, I'm working on the Troy Belt Bronco 42 inch cut and this is going to be similar for a lot of different mowers that's being made today with two blades and a 42 inch cut. Uh, this is MTD obviously. But the problem was I snapped the belt and I'm having tensioner problems keeping the belt tension and the blades disengaged. So first thing I want to show you, this is the engagement cable coming from your engagement lever, which is this yellow lever right here. And it pulls, puts tension on this spring, which puts tension on the idler arm bracket that your idler pulleys on. So let's look at this problem first. This might just be your most simple fix. Uh, but there's also another problem I just became aware of. So that cable comes through this bracket right here. And there's like a little hitch clip that goes through here. And the spring runs over. And from the factory, they're always in this first hole. If you're having a tension problem, maybe your belt's stressed or you got a slightly oversized belt which we'll talk about here in a minute too you can actually move the spring over to this hole here and get way more tension on that belt to keep it from slipping so here's the problem so i snapped the belt while i was mowing i went out and bought a brand new mtd belt like an actual replacement belt for this and it didn't want to fully engage and when i disengaged it still kept spinning so i knew there's got to be something wrong with this setup on here that uh, puts tension on the belt and works the blade brake system. So this is the blade brakes here, one here and one here connected through this linkage. So when you engage it, not only does it put tension on this belt by moving this pulley, it also moves these pieces here to, uh, to allow the pulleys to spin. And there's not much drag on these, just enough to stop it from spinning. The problem was when I loosened this bolt here, to allow enough access to put the belt past this belt over here because you can't bend it, it's really stiff metal and it's really really hard to get the belt on without taking this loose on the bottom side of this pulley in between the pulley and this plate that moves there's like a double spacer there's like a spacer that's got like a collar on it like it's two sizes and it fits down inside here and that's what allows this piece to pivot on it so apparently when I put it back together that shifted and was clamping this in between here so it, it would only work right if I got the bolt to a certain tightness and past that where it was supposed to be it would lock this whole assembly up and plus it didn't have this place I knew something was wrong because it's supposed to have this play on it so I took it back apart and I also greased everything here too that this moves on and uh, made sure that that spacer was into this plate and that's what the problem was there's also a spacer down here that the bolt runs through that way you can't over tighten it because if you if that spacer wasn't there this bracket would bend so you have to have that spacer in there so don't lose that spacer if you take that bolt all the way up and there's just a lock nut on the bottom all there is the other thing i was going to talk about this is an oem belt it's not a half inch it's the width by 96 and a half inches long that's the outside diameter of the belt that's what size the factory replacement belt is. So if you go through the bins, like trying to match it up, you're not gonna find a 96 and a half inch unless you buy the actual OEM belt. It's gonna be 96 and a half. The closest you're gonna find is a 96 or a 97. Get to 96. The 97 will slip. This tensioner is just not set up for that long of a belt, but you can get by with the 96. However, if your spring is in the hole it puts more tension on it you may have to move it over to this hole just to allow it to not have too much tension on the belt in case it don't want to disengage or something so you can get by with a half inch by 96 inch belt the 96 and the 96 and a half inch is interchangeable on this that's the only potential adjustment you may have to make on that another thing i was going to mention if this ever breaks as you can see it's rusted and wearing you can drill another hole somewhere within the you know within a half inch of here it's not going to matter so much if it's at a slight angle or something. So that's another uh, good thing with this. You can always weld that up and re-drill it too if you need to. But yeah, it's uh, just a couple things I ran into with this. And I thought I'd make a quick little video just showing in case it's something you ran into. And you know, if a video like this helps one other person, you know, I feel like I accomplished something. That's why I make little videos like this. But you never know, there might be just one person out there that needs to find this. And you just happen to come across this video. So if I help you out... That's uh, what I'm trying to do. <laughs> so, and this is also the best time to take the blades off and sharpen them. It's just so much easier to get to. 
And this is the bolt I was talking about. I changed the nut out because it was rounding, so that's what the bolt looks like from the bottom side and where it's at. As you can see, it's closer to the closed end side. It's kind of hard to get to, especially if you got grass and stuff built up on there. Blades ain't too bad, but you know, it's already off. We'll go ahead and sharpen it. I need to touch it up anyway. Um, also, I would highly recommend this straight type blade instead of a mulching blade. Only time I recommend a mulching blade if you're actually mulching or if you're mulching leaves, they seem to cut up better. But if you're just doing general purpose mowing, you just need these regular high lift blades. So. And I don't recommend using an impact to put them back on unless you're able to raise the mower up enough to be able to use that to take it back off because they will get super tight. So I'm just going to put them back warm by hand, get them pretty snug, and be done with it. All right, so now the lever's stiff the whole way while it's putting that tension on that spring. And it springs back, just like it should. It wasn't doing that quite like that before. Obviously the engine's off right now. So I'm checking the belt tension. That's pretty good. Way better than it was. And it's slack when, it's, when the blades are off. So hopefully we're in good shape. Well guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. And if you got any questions, comments, or suggestions for a similar video, or something you want to see, uh, leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can and try to make a video if it's something I can do. So uh, thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you on the next one.